Greetings, everybody. This is Jeff Scott. It is um, Sunday, the 5th, 926 a.m., and this is my top-down review. Um, I titled today, Double Tops or New Highs Ahead. Um, maybe we already had our double tops in the pullback, and maybe we're poised to go through them. Last week, my title was whether the uh, Russell would join the party, and it did in a big way, as we'll see. Hope you're making money. It was another great Radio week for the market. Sorry about that. Looks like we have some thunderstorms coming here. What a shocker. That's the uh, what happens when you live in South Florida. As always, this is for educational purposes. I'm a doctor, not a broker. I have no licenses that would suggest that I should be managing your money. I am independent. I own all the tools that I use. And trading involves risk. And you alone are solely responsible for any decisions you make. I'm not going to spend any time here, except I've learned from a lot of smart people, many of which are shown here. I spend most of my time with TradeStation or Thinkorswim using some various indicator sets. I'm starting to play with eSignal for various reasons, uh, mostly because I find my TradeStation future speeds to be a little bit delayed because I have the number of um, indicators I use. Big, big surprise when I found that one out. Um, a lot of Tools I use after market, uh, sometimes during market, HGSI is the key as is edge rater. Uh, seasonality, this is not a good time for finding seasonal trades for my, in my experience. And Superior Profit Co. has got some um, great tools that I use as an um, adjunct to HGSI. Here's a website for HGSI, free 30-day trial, no credit card required. I get absolutely nothing except... Um, I'd like to support the program because the more users, the more investment they make. Under investing strategies, you'll see a list of videos by me, Ron Brown, and others. Stock patterns are cyclical. <clears throat> Coming at the end of December, we clearly were in this green circle. Um, even the um, Canary Index, since December 26, is up. 29%. I keep thinking that we're getting close to the sell signal, and every time we do, we take another leg up. So I really learned not to predict, not to overplay my protection without getting a clear cut sell signal in the market, which we really haven't had. And I'm not going to tell you we have one this weekend either. I listened to um, what's Oscar's list? Oscar Cabarini? Cabarini? And um, John Thomas, a mad hedge fund trader this weekend, as part of a um, as part of a um, program that Metastock put on, and um, they were actually pretty bullish, um, especially John Thomas, who is a pretty famous hedge fund trader. So I lean more to the left, buying cost stocks and calls. I put cover calls in yellow because when I'm real bullish, I don't want to cap out my gains. However, in some of the high flyers with high um, volatility, I may sell a cover call to reduce some of my out-of-pocket. Bull put spreads is just putting money in the bank like the uh, United Healthcare trade I took um, last week or the week before. Um, it's important to close out your trades and not do buy and hold. I showed you why last week on my insurance companies, why I was going to close out the trades before earnings that turned out to be smart. Um, I do have more cash and less positions than I normally do at this period of time. And I just learned as market gets to new highs, I take a little bit of profits off the table. Because as I found last year, when the market had a major correction, the profits you took off and left in the bank are still there. Friday was a sea of green. That just tells you the strength in the market. Now, the only thing that's weak, and you can't even see it on Friday, is energy. But Friday, energy even looked fine. So strong markets. If we look at the major markets, um, upper left is the E-minis, NASDAQ in the center, YMs in the right. So the futures of the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Dow. The Russell, um, this is the ETF, IWM, the VIX, and the dollar. I don't even need to go into the clearer pictures. You can see the little white balloon opened up on Wednesday on um, both the E-minis and the NASDAQ. It's basically signaling a high for the year, all-time highs it turns out to be. The Dow, is, a few days ago, tagged their high of the year um, and sold off thereafter. It's not at an all-time high. 
Now, I talked about double tops. So I guess I'm going to have to go into these anyways. Um, pull this one up here. One second. And let's see if we can. Well, since that was a high, almost by definition, we'll show it on the HGSI stocks, it's easier. If that's the new high, that means it just took out the old high. So you always have the risk of a double top, which is why the highs were my target. And we sold off with the Fed. We had an indecision day on Thursday, and then Buffett saying that he's going to buy Amazon plus employment numbers really juiced the market on Friday. So December lows, current today, that's all-time high on the futures. Um, we are in Fuego on the E-minis. On the NASDAQ futures, similar story, a little bit of a sell-off after getting to their prior highs. New buy signal on the NASDAQ futures. On the Dow futures, they've been in a buy signal. Um, you know, double tops, according to Mr. Thomas, are something to be sold. And there's your double top. Now, yes, you spiked up above it, but am I really going to worry about that one day? No, I'm going to look at the one, two, three days that I pretty much stalled in this area. And then what happens after a double top, you sold off. Well, we're assaulting that level again, so it'll be interesting to see. I guess that's sort of the um, little bit of the irritant in the ointment. Here's the IWM, and we get a full year's worth. Here's the old-time highs. We've got a long ways to go on the IWM to get to a double top. So, but look at what the IWM this week had a big move up, 1.4%, I believe, on the week, and the leader. Um, the VIX, if everything's strong, the VIX probably came down. The VIX has a sell signal. The VIX is clearly at that level of complacency. And if you look at the dollar futures, uh, you know, it's interesting. John Thomas um, basically is a dollar, not a dollar bull, and he called this a high of the year. Well, we'll see. Uh, obviously, um, Let's look back at multiple years. That was a pretty three years on a weekly. And we sold off, but you know, we, we've been much higher going back to um, end of 2015. All right. The weeklies, I don't think I need to go into right now. The weeklies... Um, kind of look a lot like the dailies. So markets are clearly strong right now. And you can see the weekly straight up off the bottom. The Russell starting to join the party. And then I like this because it gives me a chance to look at daily, weekly, and monthly. And the first column is the E-minis, the second is the NASDAQ, the third is the Russell, the fourth is the NYSE, and the fifth is the Dow. And you can see the green triangles almost under every um, index. Um, this was a week ago, but for the most part, they had signals yesterday. If you look at weeklies, they're all in a buy. If you look at monthlies, they're all in a buy. Strong market. Now, the rates didn't do much this week, despite the fact that we had strong employment numbers and we had some, I won't say bad comments from Fed Powell, but... For those that really thought there was a chance at a rate cut, he took that off the board. Um, and I think that that's why the market sold off Wednesday and Thursday. Rates didn't do much. Um, I'm just going to show this live because if I highlight, see, look at this bright blue. You can actually see that it's turned up at the end. This is a spread between the two and the tens. So there's been a lot of concern about what happens when we invert the yield curve and it looks like we don't have a problem with the S&P in pink until it starts to go back up. But we have not inverted the yield curve yet. And actually, we went a little, for, we bounced a little bit on that yield curve this week. AD lines are the white thing. The S&P is the yellow, and they're hitting new all-time highs. And you can see it better here in the NYSE, an all-time high on the AD line. The major market ETFs are all following it. And the light green is the diamonds. Uh, actually, the yellow is the spiders, IWM and transports. 
even TLT uh, didn't do much this week with the uh, bonds kind of going sideways. Breath, well, we continue to march up. Now, this used to be stocks go to 200 when we when I expect a pullback. And I had noticed over time the pullbacks were coming with less um, extreme breath. And we're at that level if I extended this line today. And even on the stocks above the 20 and above, above the 200, above the 40 have increased. If you look at the three-month new high, new lows, we're getting up near the top. We always reverse when I get up here. Always reverse. Now, you can go sideways and ease that off. You can have some internal rotation and ease that off without the market falling back from here. So I'm going to be watching. But this just tells me we're getting an approaching extreme, although we might not be there on Monday. The daily McClellan, it still bothers me. We're, we're making new closing highs or getting towards new highs on the daily and the weekly. Yet, if I look at the oscillator and the summation index on both the daily and on the weekly, they seem to be lagging. Current buckets, again, two-thirds of the stocks in the S&P 1500 are above their midline of their Bollinger Bands. That's clearly bullish. We're now approaching 17% of the stocks above their Bollinger Bands. Now, this is a better indicator on the other side, meaning it's more accurate when I start to get more and more stocks below the lower Bollinger Band. But if you think about it, at 90%, 93% of the time, stocks spend their time within their Bollinger Bands. When you start to get student body right and you start to get 17 or 18% of the stocks above their Bollinger Bands, what are they going to do? They're going to move back in. So I think we're, we're sitting at a point in time where I'm starting to wonder when that's going to happen. Thank you, Mr. Trade Station. Uh, Hindenburg Omens, these are signs of impending market tops. They certainly predicted the doom and gloom of the fourth quarter, although I didn't want to believe it, but they were correct. Um, there's You would look for a signal in the first column here, and there are no Hindi signals. Once we get out to new highs, we start to look for them a little bit closer. There still aren't a whole lot of new lows. Now, on Wednesday, the markets rolled over with the Fed, and you can see these red, pink and red here. Those are kahunas. The darker the color, the deeper the kahuna. Those are dramatic moves to the downside, and that took us out of this bullish posture and started giving us, for example, in a couple of the major indexes, um, sell signals. And then what happened on Friday, we got a sea of green on the other side, but here a sea of blue where we had kahunas across the board sort of reverse that. So does the line of kahunas signal risk on? It certainly felt like that on Friday. Sector strength improved. The big laggard right now, actually there's a couple, are energy and I believe materials. And real estate on one of my other charts is not far behind. Canaries in the coal mine. Here's the interesting thing is they I've been talking about how they finally broke out. And I do think they're poised to run to two higher highs on the back of Amazon and maybe um, Tesla. Well, Tesla's not part it, it, Tesla is part of this has turned around some with that funding that was just announced. Um, three quarters of them are in a buy signal right now. And they broke had a, had a buy signal come in Friday with a kahuna. My indicator turned positive. They got to get above the PSAR. They're in a squeeze. But the part that's most remarkable for me is they're up 29% off the December low. So even though they don't look like much, they've had a big move. And then the index, which I put together back in March 3rd, which was pretty good call near the market top right up in here. We ran for a couple days and then we topped, um, at least top for then. It's poised to run again. So it has not rolled over yet and died. Know your news and earnings. So on the left, there's not big news. We got Mr. Powell speaking, and we got some CPI numbers. Other than that, there's other Fed heads speaking. We got the usual things like the energy report on Wednesday. But it's a relatively soft news week. And this is from Econoday. Here's the uh, link. Just do econoday.com in your browser. <laughs> the most anticipated earnings releases, um, Bausch & Lomb's, The Old Valiant, AIG, Hertz, Mosaic, The Fertilizer. I thought they came out on Friday. Regeneron, Big Pharma, Lyft, the first public quarter. 
Papa John Pizza, hey, Ferraris, you can own the stock if you can't afford the car. Roku, Etsy, Marathon, other energy stocks. Um, CenturyLink, which laid an egg when they took away, I believe, their much of their dividend. Um, and Thursday, Dropbox Bookings, that's a, a, a one of the canaries right there. AMC Entertainment, and then on Friday, Viacom, Marriott. Um, so this is a big week for earnings. Um, so obviously, this will have something to do with the market. I have a position in Vitae. Um, I'll probably take profits. So to be honest, I like what the stock looks like, so I'll have to see. Market thoughts, week sends on a high note as Buffett drives Amazon higher and strong employment juices the market after a short Fed delivered sell-off. Russell did join the party, leading the market higher, doing 1.4%, while the other indices were relatively flat, 1.1 to 0.2. S&P 500 NASDAQ hit all-time highs. Dow remains a bit below the all-time high, but is at the 2019 highs. EPS season remains in force while it's a quiet week for data, but watch out as Powell and other heads take the mic. News risk remains. China, bar testimony, tax returns, you know, you know, Korea launched some missiles. But markets like to climb a wall of worry, and this market is like every other market that way. Bull markets appear, the bull, excuse me, the market appears to be poised to retire highs. Watch out for double tops, but bull markets often end with a melt up, which I wonder if that started on Friday. Oh, yeah, don't forget, we are in May with my usual top down review. Uh, I got a lot of positive comments. I really appreciate them since I don't charge you for this. That's the only way I know people actually appreciate it and like them. So keep them coming. It wouldn't hurt to put those positive comments on YouTube because that way um, others can see them and we can grow the folks and people that listen to my webinar, not because I care how many, <clears throat> but I want to drive people to use um, HGSI. Before I jump into HGSI, let's just look at Q. I wanted to call out some of the things I like about the Q software. Now, here's the big caveat, especially those who are wondering, did he turn away from HDSI? Absolutely not. Q is a great tool. It does not come with its own data, and it requires a subscription to Metastock. I actually asked the proprietor of Q, Cigar, Cigar, can't we just do this in HDSI? And he said there's a number of elements that he uses that are not in HGSI, which is really too bad because um, as much as I'm willing to spend the money and get um, Thomson Reuters, um, which has got a new name, Rivetta, Rafita, who knows, um, I know most of my users probably are not. Um, as you can see here, oh, by the way, <clears throat> Cigar also does some excellent indicators packages for TradeStation uh, and Metastock, but I know many of my users use TradeStation. Over five days in brown or maroon, the only loser has been energy down 4.8%. It had a big rebound on Friday, as did materials, the pink there. Um, you could see everything was positive on Friday. If we look at sector rotation and we look at one day, what was strongest on Friday, it was healthcare, and healthcare has had a big rebound. Um, now, if I look at the, I like looking at the two-day pace. It ignores one-day wonders. And I can see in 11, information technology has started moving back up, and it stubbed its toes. And now it looks like it's turning around. Um, discretionary is strong as well. Um, so healthcare we've been looking at, let's just look at, is there anything moving in information technology? So if I hit that check mark, it'll bring up the um, various groups, industry groups within information technology. And let's look at a two-day pace here and see what's moving the most. And it looks like it's technology, hardware, storage, and peripherals, something that was extremely strong, stubbed its toes, and now it's moving back. And we could look at these to see if there's anything that provides good value. And I'm not a fundamentalist, I'm a technician, but when I see things like HPE, um, and I'm looking for blue and both, and I'm looking at XRX, Xerox. If I look over here, I 
and they had some revenue declines. But HPE earnings are out May 20th. HPQ May 28th. I actually like what I'm seeing here for MHQ. I'm looking at the earnings per share growth. Notice they're all dark green, very positive. Looking at earnings, revenue growth, um, pays a small dividend. I would have picked HPQ, so maybe we'll come back and look. So it's a way of doing top-down analysis, but making your stock picks, looking at stocks that are undervalued versus those that are overvalued in the market. Notice Apple is considered to be overvalued by this tool. So I play with this during the day. That's one of the advantages. I can look at um, all industry groups and get a sense of at a given moment on a given day what industry groups are really moving, still on the back of some good earnings. I can look at what industry groups are lagging and start looking, are there anything here that's sensing that they're going to turn around? And I might look at one day pace and see Big turnarounds in construction and engineering, colons, consumables, hard to go there, oil exploration, um, oil and glass drilling. So there may be a story in energy. I mean, obviously, we had a big XLE day. So <clears throat> that tells me that energy was in fuego, and this was just a one-day scan. So I use this during the day. I find it to be very helpful with the caveat you got to have the data source. Now, again, before going to HGSI, let's look at my uh, six steps in TradeStation. We'll look at E-minis to start. Um, that is setting up to be a high-closed doji. The reason why it's not turning high-closed doji color is probably because I don't have it on this system. I'm just curious. Let me go into my screener, which I do have it on. Let's type in an at ES. Uh, sometimes when I have all my windows open, it doesn't always work all the way that frustrates the daylights out of me, Mr. Trade Station. And, yep, we got an orange bar, so it does count as a high-closed doji. I'm not sure I kind of consider an uptrend. We're still in a sell signal on the ES. We're in a daily, I mean a weekly, a monthly buy. We're in a green bar, which is a bullish bar. We're in the middle of the envelopes. Um, we are at a high level of the high jump, 95.66, although they can go higher, and the weekly bond go is green. Now, this is the only major index in TradeStation, and it, there's a small difference between this algorithm and apparently Genesis and Thinkorswim because it's already turned positive there. But if we look at the NASDAQ, you'll see green. Let's just look here. It's 96% as well. If I look at the Dow... It's a, also in a sell signal, weekly, monthly buys, green here, 85%. The Dow has more room to go. If I look at the Russell, it's in a buy signal with that MACD divergence popping up coming near the top at 90%. So these are bullish. I do think the Dow and the um, S&P are very close to being a buy signal. There are buys on the other platforms. My concern on this, the reason why I want to go here, is you're already at 96% of the high jump bar. So what does that mean? I define the high jump bar as the difference between price and three moving averages added together. Price to the 17, price to the 50, price to the 200. We learned this from Ian Woodward a decade, two decades ago. I then, what I do different than Ian is instead of just looking at a picture, I plot that as a, as a indicator. And then I, what I really plot is how high, what's the percentage today of that number, the highest number going back here, um, 200 bars. And this tells me of the last year of trading, this is the 95th percentile. You don't get much higher than the 95th percentile. I know I was like that in school, just kidding. Actually, I was a pretty good student. Um, probably not as good as my wife. All right, so let's get out of that. I don't like how my trade station is doing its... Um, it's switching charts. Let's go into HGSI. Uh, here we go. Designer. Let's look at Major Markets Plus Warehouse View. Um, and I won't go spoiler alert yet. Top-down view. 
So this is looking at price and value. Small caps, mid caps came up to the top. No surprise, the Russell outperformed. The S&P 500 is actually closer to the bottom. On the bottom, commodities still in a bear market, the dollar, gold, volatility, and um, treasury pro shares. So let's take a look at some of these. Let's start with the dollar, or the S&P 500. And um, notice I said that um, John Thomas reiterated yesterday <clears throat> that you sell double tops. And what did we have this week? We had a double top. And what happened? We sold off, but it quickly reversed, had a new buy signal. And um, let me just make that cleaner for you. And it certainly looks like this one wants to go higher. If I look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, ditto. Everything's above the 50. The Dow actually crossed back above their 17. Um, if we look at the Russell 2000, just had a golden cross, and the Russell has been in a range. It's at the and it just broke out the top of that range on Friday. We'll see if that's meaningful. And if we look at the Nasdaq Composite, another strong performer, little pullback, ready to roll again. Notice the Kahuna's came in on the markets. If I look at the dollar, dollar had been strong. Um, John Thomas said he thinks the dollar's peaked for the year. I've been saying it's been going sideways with an upwards trend. Is it done going up? We shall see. The VIX, well, it's the opposite of the dollar. The dollar's up at the top. The VIX is at the bottom. Um, continues to be in complacency zone. And if the dollar has been strong, you know what gold is, and gold is weak. Here's my declining tops line. I'm not a believer in gold until I take that out, um, which is two bucks away on the Gold spiders. If I look at silver, we took that line out this week, but it's still below its moving averages and still very weak. Although, interestingly, it did have a buy signal come in on Friday. So I start with the indexes, and it's hard for me not to be bullish. But if I go back, just let's look at the, the uh, Let's look at the S&P 500 for a second. Here is the old way that we looked at the high jump. And the high jump was higher in February of last year. Um, but if you look back, it's really at the levels that we saw back here, only exceeded by back here in 2018 February, which is beyond my 200 days. I look at the last 200 days, um, let's see what happens when I do this. And when I look at just year to date, you can see that we're up near the top. The problem with this high jump bar is it varies by how much data I show in the chart. So that's why I pegged it. To the um, to the 200 bars, so markets are strong. Industry groups, how do they look? Go down to seven. Warehouse, two-day force, and I can see 83 groups to the top upside. Only one group to the downside: educational services. Don't know who this company is, but it had a rough week. Um, can we see anything there? Yeah, big gap down. Certainly not something that I'd be chasing either way. So it's getting down to its um, undercut and potential rally zone and a place where it bounced in the past. Now, if I go back to the five-day down, I've got 14 groups, so no surprise, one, two, three, four, five of them are energy. Okay. 
All right, so let's look at the two-day up again. Now, I put a twist on this. I'm still not ready for prime time on this, but I want to know which groups not only are moving to the upside, but have a lot of their stocks actually giving me buy signals. So I add that, I drop it down to 39. So these are the 10 that I'm going to look at. Now, I may not go through all of them for the essence of time. We are at about 30 minutes thus far. Right click on semiconductors, double click. Now, for those who have never been to see me before, you're probably thinking, how many indicators can somebody use? This is all that I need. It's not all that I use. It's all that I need. So my basic indicator chart includes some vision of volume with a moving average to give me an idea of how this day compares. Four different moving averages. In magenta, this is an eight-day exponential. Ricky Sadler and Steve Bigelow call that the T-line. In green, I have a 17-day simple. In blue, I have a 50-day simple. And in red, I have a 200-day simple. I like to buy stocks in uptrends. What I really like are stocks that are um, on volume. That would have been about that, probably a Bible gap up. I like the stocks that pull back into their moving averages and break out on volume. Um, sometimes they break out with a gap and you can't chase them. Now, I add certain indicators to this that I've been using for a long time. Up at the top is the bongo. The bongo is an indicator that I, along with four or five others, created back about a decade ago. And it's really a long-term buy-sell signal indicator. When the weekly bongo goes green, which is the top, it's our way of defining an uptrend, a long-term uptrend. And you notice, had you bought when that turned, you would have been a little late, if you were four or five bars, but you'd still be in the stock. The red is a daily bongo. And what this tells me is when the, the, the weekly is in a green and the red is showing on the daily that I'm in a short-term pullback. And that's kind of what we have here. So it's a way of scanning for stocks in an uptrend with a short-term pullback. Now, the next thing on my chart, and let me go to the S&P 500. Huh. Take that filter off for a second. This here is the Hindenburg Omen. Now, we changed our data provider at HDSI. George changed it a few years back. And I noticed we weren't getting any Hindis. And it had to do with um, a change in from the... I don't know, Morningstar to bar charts, doesn't make any sense. But it turns out that the way that I could maintain this was actually to go in here and adjust this one second. All right, so now I've got all my Hindis on one line. And the Hindenburg Omen is what I look for as signs of major market tops. And you could see it here, which is why I mention it every time, because that was telling us to get out of the market. And if I tighten this up a lot, you'll see how useful it's been in the past. But we didn't see any since really since March 2009. Saw a couple in 2014, and what happened? The market rolled over. Here is 2007. First on the first run up, let's see if I can't, uh, things never work out the way you want, but I'm going to try. All right, that'll work. As we're running up in the early part of 2007, we started to see a Hindenburg Omen. Um, I typically 
pay a lot of attention to these. Don't want to be long when I get below the 50-day moving average. Um, but every time we undercut the 50, we rallied. So a little bit of complacency. Then all of a sudden, we had a fairly significant pullback. In fact, if we just measure from when we broke through the 50 to the low, we dropped almost 10%. That was from the 50-day moving average. Then we had a, a fairly massive rally back up to a new high, 15%. And then what did we see? We saw a bunch of Hindenburgs come in. We broke below the 200 here. And then what happened? The bottom fell out. So you tell me, do you think that Hindenburg Omen is a valuable sign? There's your bottom of the market and then the recovery. So I love the Hindenburg Omen. I look at it all the time. And I find it to be a very useful tool. Okay. Here's the high jump, which we were talking about. I've been very evasive about what this green bar is here and what that is. That's a new indicator. I have working on a new indicator package, and I'm hoping to partner with a friend of mine on it who actually has a name and would give me the actual ingredients. Right now, I've tried to emulate what a famous package does, but since no one gave me the ingredients, it's only emulating. This, so these are the buy-sell signals of my new indicator. It's too whippy right now. It catches big moves, but in chop, it's too whippy, so I'm still working on it. This is the kahuna. Kahuna is a large move in percent B. If it's a light kahuna, either light blue or light red, it's 0.24 up or down. If it's a dark blue, it's 0.4. That tells me something's happening. Now, to this, I add a few more things that I like. And for those that have been here before, I apologize if I'm going through things that you already know. And what do I add here? I add accumulation distribution here, which is the third. I add the 2 and 13 day force, which I'm probably going to start taking off because if I don't use them that much. I, I use the bongo in lieu of the force. So let me, I'll, I'll probably start cleaning that up. Here again is the Jeffrey indicator. Here's the high jump bar with a green candle high and a red, a green candle low and a red candle high. This is a Bible gap up from Morales and Catcher. The yellow is a squeeze. This is mobile breakouts and breakdowns. The red dots are the wild wowser PSAR. It flips to a green dot when it's a, when it's a buy signal. Um, this gray is the industry group. And then I added a volume window here with Phoenixes in red, which is market going down and Eureka market going up. And this basically is my market that I follow. And I have my Hindenburg hiding up here. So I'm going to clean this up before next week. Now, I've been working on an implementation of what I'm going to call a bullish doji reversal and a bearish doji reversal. But... If you've got a high close doji on the daily or weekly or a low close doji, it's going to turn green up here. Now, maybe I'll talk to George and see if I can't get them to make this color black and go green for a, a high and red for a low when it fires. And then, so I put it all together. So I look at universal display. What do I see? Bongo weekly has been green for a long time. I'm getting close to my high jump. I had a Bible gap up out of the squeeze with a mobile breakout. My indicator turned positive. A pocket pivot. I'm sorry, Morales and Catcher and a Kahuna. That's a very bullish move. It closed in the lower part of the day, almost near the, the bottom of the gap, which is not bullish to me. And I like opening up the window of fundamentals. Great earnings per share growth coming into this stock. And that might be a reason to watch it. Universal display. Next one, Qualcomm. I just look at the right side. Everything's green. It had a mobile breakout. It had a Bible gap up. Two of them in a row gone sideways since. Pocket pivots. Target. This thing's going to 100. I like Qualcomm. Pays a 3.5% dividend. 
AMD. This is one that's been like boring me to death um, as it's moved up this year. And it's in a gradual move up. I like buying it when it pulls down to the 50. Um, right now, the earnings per share growth the next quarter are not so good that it turns up. This is something that usually starts to move before the market turns on semiconductors. And notice um, so demand and supply 6.3%. That's under big accumulation right now. Intel Corporation sold off. I'll pass. I'm going to back up a little bit. Give me a little more space here. Thank you. Uh, Micron, we looked at NXP Semiconductors. Yep, AMD. I'm sorry. I meant, I said Micron. This was AMD. And Micron looks very similar, which is why I didn't capture it. This is a good buy zone, in my opinion, on, on, on Micron technology. Two kahunas in a row. Mobile breakout from a squeeze. My indicator firing and a weekly high close doji. NXPI breaking out to new highs. Coherent is another one that looks interesting. Earnings per share don't look too good, but I gotta love this pullback to the moving averages, mobile breakup from a squeeze, my indicator, pocket pick in a kahuna, strong industry group, and it had a high close doji on the daily. Don't like the earnings per share growth. It doesn't seem to matter right now. You know, when I see this, I wonder, because that looks like some bad numbers. I believe their um, earnings are out as well. Cree, nice move up, had craziness on its earnings days. Um, I probably wouldn't buy this. It's at its high jump here, and this was a strange day. But look at this earnings per share growth, but it's also high P.E. lot to like in this group. So semiconductors remain strong. I gave you three to five that look interesting. Telecom carriers. Now, the other thing I forgot to point out is if you look down here in the lower right-hand corner, you're going to see that in the group telecom carriers, 73% of the stocks are in a buy signal. And on Friday, I had 16 new buys and only one new sell. And this one had a high close doji on the daily. So Zix Corporation, which I've been watching, didn't really know much about it. Bible gap up. It's moved too much for my taste. I go to the next one. Sprint is in merger hell. Ring Central. Nice play here. I want to buy it off the 50. I want to buy it on this bar. I can't go back in time. Why? Because I had kahunas. I had a mobile breakout from a squeeze. I'm in a weekly uptrend. Don't like the fundamentals. I don't chase, especially market tops. Verizon pulled back to its 200 and bounced a little bit. Pays a nice dividend. Specialty Pharma. Take a look at these. This is a mixture. Um, you've got traditional drugs, you've got marijuana, and you've got some mistakes like Garden Health, which is really a lab. Should be in the, I'm not sure if it should be where Illumina is or what. Acadia, uptrend off the December lows, sitting at its major moving averages. Everything is green. Pocket pivots, kahunas, that looks interesting here. I put a stop just below the bar of the day. Anica Therapeutics, Bible Gap Up. These are often story stocks. Now, ASCO, which is the American Society of Clinical Oncology, is in June. On May 15th, we'll see the abstract book come out, which shows some of the important data to be presented. You'll see a lot of these stocks run into the meeting, and they typically soften during the summertime, those that have cancer drugs. Neurocrine Biosciences, don't know what's going on here. It's pulled back pretty hard. Earnings are out. Great earnings per share growth in this stock. Um, hold on one sec. Let's see who's calling. So I'd have to do some research, so I might right-click here, go down to more info from web, and let's look at Finviz. Got some data coming up. Talking about MA option. Loss, missed estimates, growing revenue. 
All right, so it's down because of its um, earnings. So it's just, I think this is an animal health breaking out. That's a nice looking chart, a little loose, but breaking out to new highs. Another bubble gap up. Here's one that I'm interested in. I'm not sure this really belongs here because it's more of a lab company. You notice that two thirds of these companies are, are on buys, 34 buys on Friday, four sells. Um, this is a true innovator in the space of molecular care and that they do a molecular test for cancer and lung cancer specifically from your blood. It doesn't require another biopsy. Um, pull back a little bit of a base. Um, had my buy signal come in. I'm interested in this right here. It had a big run after its IPO. I bet this thing runs again. That's it on Specialty Pharma. So I typically go through the top 10 data. Earnings are out, loses money, kind of rolling over here. I'm not a big fan of this, although it did run up into the 50 with a Bible gap up. Why do I not like this chart when I like a lot of others that have all these colors on the side? It's kind of like, like a top in pattern to me. It's an expensive stock, no earnings, so I'll find something I like better. Zynga makes money, although starting to make money in the next couple of quarters. Earnings are out. Nice move here. It's a cheap stock. Uh, mobile breakout squeeze bobble gap up here. Um, that looks interesting if you like cheap stocks. Adobe, not a cheap stock, but in a big power move, doing well. Paycom, you know, I sold this thing somewhere back here. I'm like ready to kill myself on this one. It's now $210 and it looks like it wants to go higher. Breaking out again as a weekly high close doji after earnings. We use it in my office. I should have known better. So I typically will look through Zendesk, looks interesting, sideways move. So it's basing here, mobile breakout from a squeeze, my indicator turned positive, and a kahuna on Friday. That looks interesting. Salesforce getting ready for earnings. Let's just look at a couple more e-commerce. Can you say Amazon? I mean... You know, I've said it many times, this is my biggest holding. Um, it took either kahunis of steel or stupidity, or in my case, a little bit of both and a, and a use of, of options to, 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 to um, create some cushion to watch the stock correct during the end of last year. But I held on because I had conviction. I made money on some option plays to go against my losses. And we're going to take out new highs. I think 2000 is just a matter of weeks or days away. And having Buffett come into the stock um, is certainly nice. you got to almost play this thing clearly with options. It's a tough thing to play with stock at this price. But it looks like it's going higher. Mercado Libre, high base in a breakout on Friday probably would not be chasing Alibaba I have a position in which I instituted a week ago coming in off the moving averages and breaking out on Friday this is one that I might add to it's got great earnings per share growth earnings are coming out in another week something to be aware of Netflix don't know what juice did on this weekend I have a small position left in Netflix a lot of competition in the space, but I'm never getting rid of my Netflix or you. I don't care about Disney. Maybe CBS or Hulu or something might be at risk. Chegg is a player that I used to have. Um, earnings are out. It's sold off. I'll let it come back up a little bit before I get interested. But I'm going to be watching it. PDD. Here's one I like, Etsy. This has been one of my holdings during for the year. I'm not in it right now. Earnings are this week, which is why I got out. It's in a little flag there, and it wants to break out on the weekly. So this is one that I may do a small position before earnings and, um, and then potentially buy more after earnings if it continues my thesis. Pull back into the 50 and a breakout on Friday. So I'm going to not go through any further industry groups to the upside. I looked at the downside group. 
I did find a lot of stocks this week that I liked to be, you know, I mean, it's absurd how many stocks I found this week that I liked. Um, that may in itself be a sign of a top. So what I do is um, I build some giant watch lists. And then those who have been here before kind of know that I basically am a little bit wacko. And I literally spent all day yesterday looking at charts now and listening to a few people in the background. Uh, I kind of like doing that. In fact, I looked at 915 charts made my, my watch list. I take that 915 and I add it to the stocks that made the um, had weekly high close dojis. And I took the top from that list, and then I had 203 that I took into TradeStation. And that 203 resulted in 113 that will be on my watch list. Now, how do I watch 113 stocks? It's weird, all but one change. I go into my trading system, and somewhere down here, I'll be able to scan for new signals occurring to the day. I can look for bounces. I can look for breakouts. I can look for boxes where they come down and hit some support. There's that coherence. Not coherence, coherent. Headwinds are uh, not good because it's usually the end of a move is coming. Um, new entries. These would be new bullish entries that occurred. I can look for reversals to the upside. Arconic, Palo Alto Networks. I look for green candle lows. Red candle highs. I can look for stocks in a squeeze. I can look at those that are breaking down out of a squeeze, breaking out from a squeeze. I can look at stocks that have pocket pivots forming during the day, up or down. I can look at Bible gap ups as they're forming. So I know who's likely to have a Bible gap up that day, which I may want to make an act, take a move on. And I'm doing that while I'm watching the news wires and looking for the big movers of the day. And, oh, by the way, I can look for stocks that are flashing with new PPS buy or sell singles. If they're flashing, that means the current bar, which would be Friday's bar, has a new high close doji. And I'm able to monitor a number of things in TradeStation, including when are the earnings coming up. So I knew which ones to stay away from. So, I always like to show you and go through a little bit what I was looking at. These are the ones that made it through my criteria. There are a lot of stocks here. So, I'm going to show the window three times. First, take a picture if you want. Here's the second time. Here's the third time. These are the stocks that I found <coughs> to be interesting, not this HSBC holding. That was, shouldn't be there. So now let's sort this by industry group. I, I like the banks. A lot of these small banks look interesting. Or I'm not sure they're small regional banks. First Bank Corp, run up, sideways move, multiple days of kahunas, mobile breakup from a squeeze, great earnings per share growth, pays a small dividend. I like that. On the biotech side, Stemline will be presenting at ASCO. It's in a very steady move up here. It's already getting at the high jump bar, so be careful. Insight, I picked that two weeks ago when it was at a really good buy, buy point. Let's see if that's... Now it's getting extended. Now it would be interesting to see it as a breakout here with great earnings per share growth, or does it fall back? Exelixis is a stock with a great drug on the market. I think they, they would be a takeout candidate at some point. Six billion dollar market cap. They've got a blockbuster drug. Buying it off the 200 day moving average is probably a low risk phenomenon. Um, casinos and gaming, international game technology looked like a bit of a um, 
outlier. Certainly, it's a bottom fish pick with a mobile breakout from a squeeze. It's got earnings per share coming in. It's a turnaround play there, and it pays a 5.5% dividend. Many of these we've looked at before. Finisar, a communications equipment company. Um, amazing earnings per share growth. Much higher growth than its multiple. Uptrend sideways. Looks like it's breaking out here. Mobile breakout from a squeeze. My indicator turned positive. Pocket pivot into Kahuna's the last three days. I like Finisar. Earnings not to June. This one, I have no idea. Maybe somebody knows a lot more than I do. Um, I'm looking for the next tandem. <laughs> it's in a group where there are 12 buys and one sell on Friday. has a weekly high closed doji. It is a beaten down stock. There's no way it can pay a 13% dividend, losing money. But um, this is a kind of stock that, Sometimes I buy a few shares and I forget about. Um, I don't know enough about the company. It's a half a billion a quarter, so it's a $2 billion company in revenue. It's interesting. Again, I don't trust that dividend yield. You're net worldwide. Nice steady move up in the consumer finance group. I liked a number of the consumer financing. Last week I bought QDN after I talked about it here. Had a nice move up, great earnings per share growth. If this is real, it can certainly uh, move a whole lot higher. E-commerce discretionary, the three we looked at, Amazon, Alibaba, Chegg. I'm going to be watching, not jumping on Etsy. I like more. I mentioned Invite. Um, this is the same group that Garden should be in. <coughs> Uptrend, sideways move, moving off the 50. This is a chandelier stop. It has to get through that for me to buy it. Doesn't make money. Earnings are this week. Um, I bought it here. I added to it here. Issue is do I buy more or do I take profits? I took. I have to look at this before earnings come out on Tuesday. A lot of great stocks. Trade Desk has certainly been a leader this year. Again, looking for that next tandem. I don't know anything about Curate Retail Group, but a stock that's a bottom fish with a Kahuna mobile breakout from a squeeze. It also had a weekly and a daily high close doji, which made it on my radar. I keep referring to tandem diabetes. So I'll just take my victory lap right now. Thank you. Those that were watching me in April of 2000. And 18, heard me talk about some little company called Tandem Diabetes, and I admittedly said I have no idea what they do, except they're in the diabetes group, and I gave it to you on the 8th. On the 9th, the stock went as high as 585. I put a buy signal in. I was on a plane. I bought it on the 10th for about 6 bucks a share, and the stock had a nice move from 6 up to, before I do that, notice the pattern. Fallen angel, you see the turning we are so high, sideways for a long time. And then what changed? It moved up above its moving averages. The weekly bongo had gone green. Some kahunas, big volume came in. Oh, yeah, if you bought it at six, you should be very nice to me because it ran all the way up to 77, 76 dollars. I gave it to you again the last week where it pulled back to the 50. Um, that would have been here. It had a huge, a funny response to earnings. It traded up, pulled back, and now it's running again. This is probably one of my best picks ever. Tandem diabetes. When I say look for my next tandem diabetes, now you know why. And just going through the list here, did anything else pop up? Another junk pattern but one that i like here's a stock that's down bottom fish below the 200 day all of a sudden breaks out above it good earnings per share growth it's a REIT. it pays a 10.7 percent um dividend and if you like that one you might like 
this one as well, Pennsylvania real estate, good earnings per share growth, revenue is strong, 12% dividend. I like those patterns. I like to create income as well. Now that I'm a retired guy, it doesn't hurt. Well, I'm not really retired yet, but I'm close. Um, solar stocks looked interesting. Man, I, I have a lot of stocks here. I apologize for that. CSIQ sitting right at the 50 with a Kahuna, excuse me, a pocket pivot and a Kahuna, breaking above the 50, earnings per share coming into the stock. I like that one. Enphase Energy broke out this week, has great earnings still. Jinx Solar, sideways move. My indicator, pocket pivot, Kahuna, mobile breakout from a squeeze, sitting on the 50. Great earnings per share growth this quarter in demand. I like Jinko Solar as well. So the problem with super strong markets is there's lots and lots and lots to like. So on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Um, I did pick some stocks on the short side. Now, before you get concerned because you have your own stocks up here, I'm not expecting these to roll over. This market's super strong. I found stocks that are at points where if the market drops, they might fall over. Like my insight, well, we'll look at them real quickly. I'll tell you what I didn't like about them. Nike has a weekly low close doji. It's breaking down below the 50. Everything turned red here. If this market sells off, Nike comes down. Bandwidth, breaking down. It did stop here at the 50. I don't know what this company does. It doesn't make money. And lots of red on the right edge. I worry about this thing coming down if the market comes down. Anilin Pharmaceuticals is already breaking down. Insight is at resistance. Accenture looks like it's gapped down here, the mobile breakdown. Pocket pivot to the downside, Kahuna's to the downside. CGI Group, I don't know why that one's here. All right, I must have picked something that wasn't there. <laughs> Sometimes I can't read my own writing, so we'll see on the shorts. It's not supposed to be CGI. Hold on a second. It's supposed to be. Cigna. In a deep downtrend, how low can it go? United Health. I played the bounce. I'm out. Zebra technology breaking down below the 50. Whoops. Alta, if the market breaks down, there's a long way down to that 200-day moving average. Post already broken down. TGX ready to break down. National fuel gas breaking down. Now, what do I do with these? I'm not shorting any of these on Monday. I don't short big bull markets. But what I do is I stick them in a watch list. And... If I start to see these things dropping down as a group, if I start to see a lot of pink on the go with the flow entry, a lot of pink in these signals, then I'm going to know it's time for me to get out of this market. So it's more of an early warning sign. So on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Have a fantastic week. I'm going to go play some golf, and I'll see you on the other side. Thanks, everybody.